It was a beautifully warm summer's day. And in the mid-afternoon, Socrates settled down on the top of a high wall under the shade of some beautiful trees. He lay there in deep contemplation about abstract principles, his mind resting so strongly upon them that he went into a kind of trance. This trance-like state was almost a form of sleep, not the kind of sleep you'd get from too much food or from working very hard, an entirely different sleep, one when his mind was completely on the subject. In such a state of reverie, he didn't notice men of Athens gathering in a group below the wall, sitting in the same shade, but drinking amongst themselves. There were a few elders and many younger men sitting, just listening. As they talked, there were some reoccurring themes, but the themes that stood out to Socrates were the ones that caused the men to raise their voices. My wife is never intimate with me anymore. I've had enough of it. I've been telling her every day. I'll give an opportunity. She never takes it. She's always too tired. She's always too busy. I tell you, she's, she's frigid. It's like she's a disgrace as a wife. Um, women, they tend to dry up after a while. And, and my wife's the same. I've actually, I've commented on it in front of her, her, her family. Um, uh, she was very angry, but I need to do something to pressurise her to fulfil her duties. It, it's, it's really not on. I too find myself frustrated. I, I, I don't think she really knows uh, what she's doing. I, I'll tell her that every day my mind's on other women and, and maybe this could lead to us breaking up. The speech continued in a similar vein. There were times when the subject changed, but it often came back to this particular topic. The men listed the various ways they pressurised their wives, they nagged them, they humiliated them, they threatened them, or otherwise bullied them, trying to attempt to overcome the problem that they felt was in place. Socrates had heard a lot of this talk during his time serving as a soldier, and it was something that always got under his skin. In this case, he was more irritated because it had distracted his contemplations and woken him up. So he sat up all of a sudden uh, like a, a corpse coming back to life. The men below who hadn't noticed him jumped and they too sat up a bit more straight as he turned to face them. Men of Athens, he said, and started to try to climb down the wall. There was a lot of scraping and a very inelegant attempt took place. In the end, one of his sandals fell off and he got back up on the wall, deciding that it was, it was too risky when the young men gave Socrates his, his sandal back, but Socrates forgot to thank him. He, he seemed as if he was searching the faces of different men to see who had said what. Men of Athens, I am but a tired old man, and if you will wake me with your discussion, uh, you must share your wisdom with me. In return, I would ask you some questions. What would men like us teach a philosopher like you? Well, um, you are men of the world, and I heard you discussing the most mysterious of topics, women. And thus, I have some questions for men of more experience than I. No one said anything. They knew that Socrates was 
if they want to ask questions that you don't want to have to answer. They could bring enlightenment, but they could also be very uncomfortable. So men, um, how many of you are married? The men did a little count between them. Uh, six of us. And that leaves... Uh, OK, so that leaves seven... No, eight of you who aren't the younger men here. OK, so you six, these questions are directed towards you. I would like to know how a man would seduce a woman. There's a bit of laughter. But soon someone did pipe up. A woman needs a lot of attention. She needs a lot of money spent on her. She needs beautiful gifts that show you how you feel. Uh, just as a, a bird makes a nest, you need to make sure she can see that you've, you've got enough for her. And you've got to just take time with that. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, uh, but remember that it's all about a reflection of how she makes you feel. Um, when you look at her beauty, when you look at her, the inner beauty she has, it will make poetry sing in your heart. Sing that poetry to her. Um, uh, youths here, be aware, you must sing your poetry so that she can hear herself in you. It will be like her looking in the mirror and she will see her beauty in a way that she would never allow herself to. Yeah, but it, on top of that, you got to, you got to, you can attract more bees with honey than you can with vinegar, you see. You've got to make it sweet and nice. You've got to make sure that when you're with her, it's always good. You're always smiling. You go out places and you do good things together. If you do pleasurable things together, she will associate the pleasure with you. Yeah, so this is this is correct, but a lot of it is also practical. You've got to make sure she has the space. You've got to make sure she has no pressure on her and that she is OK to be with you. Make sure her family are right with that and she can see you're reliable and trustworthy to, to open herself up to. There was a silence as everyone looked for Socrates' response. But he was once again trying to climb down that wall Another failure, another seat at the top, and he turns to face everyone. So, um, men of Athens, is there ever been a case when a man has managed to use pressure, uh, nagging, bullying, humiliation, threats, to gently open the heart of a lady? Open her heart, you say? <laughs> now, um... No, this is not the case. You can't use any of that. You've got to make it all good. As I said, honey, not vinegar. She's going to be like a butterfly that lands on your hand. Yes, I, I quite agree. Socrates is completely wrong here. Um, how could you suggest such a thing? Only pleasant actions will lead to pleasant outcomes, especially when it is with the fairer sex. There was a general sense of agreement in the group. And even an incredulous look towards Socrates as if he'd asked something very stupid. Everyone became silent when they saw that Socrates' countenance had changed. He looked quite stern, maybe even angry. And this time he did get down that wall. Men of Athens. In front of these youths, you have discredited your wives. At home, you have used aggression, humiliation, nagging and bullying in an attempt to create intimacy. You have created opportunities for them as if uh, booking in a conversation or requesting a chore has been uh, done. But yet, when questioned, it is clear that not only do you know how to bring romance to women, but also that from the amount of time you've been with your wives, 
you would know how best to express this to them, for you know them better than anyone else. The men looked dumbfounded. So it seems that in our inquiry into the nature of women, we've actually discovered something more about men. The very fact that you have not deployed any strategy of romance or seduction towards your wives shows one thing that we must all conclude. The problem with intimacy is not with them, but with you yourselves. With this, Socrates left, walking into the woods, still obviously half asleep, crashing and banging as he went. The elders who had spoken so freely before now sat in silence, self-reflection. <laughs>